YouTube, what up though, Jermaine Credit Fiend. This is tactic number five, I think, with disputing collection, all right? So this one right here is a little, little different, um, but it helped me out a whole lot. So I want to share this right here with you all since you asked, hey, what are you, hey, how you be doing it? Uh, I'm, and uh, I appreciate all the GOAT stuff, whatever, but I'm not. I'm, I'm just like everyone else, people. I, but I wanted to make a difference when I ran my own credit repair company. I wanted to make a difference. That's I was going for the impact, just like I, the reason why I started my YouTube channel. I was going more for the impact. I don't celebrate deletions. I do celebrate when I see my clients getting that home that they always wanted. When I see them aiding with the new the car keys and all that, that's success. Deletions and all that stuff. I mean, that's, <laughs> you know what I mean? A consumer, a person can get a deletion by themselves. But when you strategize and, you know, and it's your, it's your company and you're able to help someone, you know, obtain those things. And and sometimes, man, first time home, but they always, you know, a dream come true what they tell me or whatever, you know, I, that was, it was, it was about, it was more about that. Um, it was more about that. That was, that was my victory right there is when it's, Hey, congratulations on the, on the home. Even though I know they don't really mention me when it be on YouTube. I mean, on Facebook, look, y'all got the keys. I want to thank my realtor. I want to thank the mortgage broker. I want to thank the, the, the trash man. I want to thank, <laughs> but they forget about the credit guy because then they'll be letting people in the business. Right. Um, so this tactic right here, number five, let me jump into it. It's, it's basically using case laws, people. It helped me out a whole lot. Um, you know, uh, when I say a whole lot, I, I I do mean that a whole lot. Like, you know, even me researching information like this right here, you know, the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau or the repeat offender. Y'all know who this company is. And standing, right? <clears throat> to pay more than $24 million for continued illegal debt collection practices and, consu and consumer reporting violations. See? Debt collecting and credit and consumer reporting is two separate things, people. If they attempted to collect the debt, I, I shared in the, in the last one, last my last, uh, um, what you call it, uh, tactic or whatever. It's the difference between debt collecting and credit reporting. But anyway, what did, I, you know, I, I'm, I was always interested in like, okay, what do they do? All right. And right here, it's a portfolio recovery associate violated the 2015 order by collecting on unsubstantiated debt y'all know what that means collecting on debt without providing required documentation y'all know they known for that how many people have problem with portfolio just not complying right and disclosures to consumers remember those disclosures i told y'all about mm -hmm. suing or threatening legal action against consumer without offering or pos um, possessing required documentation Ooh. Ooh. and suing to collect on debt outside the statute of limitations Mm, right they also portfolio recovery associates right this also fail to properly investigate and resolve consumer disputes about the company's credit reporting oh man you know what i mean and this right here is huge people because like to me i'm like oh so that's what they're doing and that's what explain why they weren't complying I'm, and i would tell my client look this is a company that just they just don't like compliance so you got to take action because I can't, I'm not going to keep sending dispute letters. All right. And you know, when people feel intimidated because it's a, one of the biggest debt buyers in the country. What the hell does that mean? Right. What does that mean? Nothing. That means they got, they got, to me, it means a lot. It means they got more money, more money to give out. <laughs> if they violate, they should compensate. But then I will put stuff in the, in the Google like this right here, debt collector sued or whatever, for whatever reason, you know, FDCPA violation, F F FCRA violation, you know, just different things um, that I would put in the search or whatever. And it could be maybe a case similar to mine, maybe debt collector sue for medical collection or violation of, you know, the uh, AR, I mean, high tech act or, or whatever the case may be. I would put that in there and see what, you know, just see what pops up. Now I learned about this right here. Uh, let me go back in the group, in my group, in my, when we have training on Sundays for my members, I man, if I'd have known about this back when I ran my company, man, this would have been huge. This right here is the the U.S. District Court, the districts, right? Like I'm in the state of South Carolina, so the, my district is District Four, all right? If, uh, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, District Eleven, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, um, District Five, you know, and so on and so on and so on. New York, where you guys at? Where New York? My district ain't. Hey, hey. Wait, damn, New York not on the map? Oh, there it is, right? <laughs> I'm like, where New York at? <laughs> That's District 2, right? District 2. So 
why this would be important because I would look up cases, federal cases within my district. Think about it. So it doesn't matter if the debt collector company is in uh, Las Vegas, you know, you know, I mean, uh, in Las Vegas, Nevada or whatever. Think about it. When you sue them, they're going to come to you. Right. So I want to look up cases within my district or whatever to help me with my dispute. OK, because this is where I learned that an FDCPA claim has nothing to do with whether a debt is valid or not. I was like, what the world? That's what the courts mean. It's like an FDCPA claim is about the methods or procedures a debt collector has taken or has taken to collect the debt. Whoa, that was a game changer to me. So who cares if the debt collector, you know, whether it's valid or not, because I'm like, why would the courts rule that way? Well, it's because if you go to the validation of debt section here, I'm like, it made sense. And it was right there in front of me the whole time. Number three right here, A, Three, a statement that unless the consumer within 30 days after receipt of the notice disputes the validity of the debt or any portion thereof, the debt will be assumed to be valid by who? The debt collector. It didn't say valid, just valid period, meaning valid by law. No, valid by the debt collector. So that's why the courts will rule and say, well, it doesn't matter if the debt is valid. It's not about whether the debt is valid or not. So think about it. If, if a debt collector is making those claims <laughs> about, well, we, you didn't respond, you know, and this and that or whatever. Well, an FDCPA claim, I'm using that case. An FDCPA claim has nothing to do, according to, you know, the court ruling, da, 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 da. An FDCPA claim that has nothing to do with whether the debt is valid or not, right? It's about the methods of procedures your company as a debt collector, uh, you know, is taking to collect the debt. And according to the FDCPA, you know, section this or that. Your company, in fact, did in fact violate my rights or whatever. That's what it's about. And then you go right here to see my little, the little secret weapon, right? It's right here, missing a liability. It's right there, invalidation of debt. The failure of a consumer to dispute the bonus, the validity of a debt under this section, meaning 30 days when they send you the done letter, say you got 30 days to respond or we're going to say it's, you know, it's valid. Okay. The failure of a consumer to dispute the validity of a debt under this section may not be construed by any court Y'all see that any court as an admission of liability by the consumer. So just because the consumer didn't just respond to that Dunning letter within 30 days, that don't mean nothing. That don't mean that the consumer is admitting. Because remember, they say, if you don't respond, we're going to say it's valid. Or on a Dunning letter, they're going to say, we're going to assume that our information is correct. Well, you can assume. You can assume anything you want. <laughs> right? Yeah, you can assume. You can assume. But that doesn't mean anything because under the validation of debt, C right here. Just because I didn't respond doesn't mean anything. So learning that, all that stuff from case laws, people. And you can use this right here and you can um, look up cases. Um, I think they have Pacer on here. Court records. Yeah. Find a case. You see, Pacer, electronic filing, court record schedule, all this other stuff right here. Um, it's good information or whatever. So that's my fifth tactic is to use case laws to help me with my dispute. Not, with the con not necessarily with the consumer reporting agency unless, unless, right? I need to go to the register agent, right? Like, you know, that's when I would use cases. And I would probably, if I'm going through to Experian, then I'm going to try to find some cases, you know, that's been heard and Experian lost with similar case and use that against, you know, to try to at least get the deletion. Um, if not, you know, get some monetary relief out of it without going to court. But use case laws, people, to help you out. You know, this, it, man, this opened my eyes and saw like, okay, I got a, full, a better understanding of how I need to dispute, you know what I mean? It really helped me out. So I don't want to get into the details and all that because I'm just sharing tactics. You guys ask for my tactics, that's what I use or whatever. So I ain't say I'm going to give a whole <laughs> a whole class on it or whatever. I'm just pointing you guys in the right direction. This is stuff that it took me a long time. I ran that company for five years and I can tell you right now, well, if my ex-girlfriend was still talking to me or whatever, she'll tell you how, how much time I sacrificed like in that office, coke, coffee you know chocolate whatever you know keep me going i'm up all night and she's like man what are you doing i'm like i gotta get to know this stuff man i really do because i wanted that impact and i took it serious and then so eventually it, it became like okay when i fight one of my client a case from a client or whatever a dispute case that is not a legal case it's, it's like i'm fighting mine it's like they messing with me so i'm not gonna let no one mess with me i don't feel no man especially not no damn corporation they, you know what I mean? I'm not fearing them. Yeah, if anything, I'm, I, I want some money out of them. You know what I mean? That's all too. I'm just, I'm just being real with y'all.
Okay. So that's it. Tactic number five. Use it. It may help, may not, may fit your situation, but people, they don't hurt to look up some laws. You got to do it on your own. Okay. That's why I didn't be putting, no, I didn't put all these cases and stuff in it. You got to learn how to do stuff on your own. That's it. You got to be independent because if you're relying on me to do it for you, what happens if I'm out of the net? Well, you can't get a hold of me. What, well, you stuck? You don't want to be stuck. Mm -mm. All right. That's it. So hit the bell notification. I'm coming with the next, the next tactic. All right. Peace, y'all.